This is Celtic Ivan departure. Information kilo at time 0450. Departure runway 22 right and 22 left. Runway 22 right. Runway is clear and dry. Runway 22 left. Runway is clear and dry. Wind 230 degree 6 knots. Cavalcade temperature 112.3. QNH 1021. No sick. Advice on initial contact. You have information. Kilo. Slightly oversized chocks for T42. Good morning, November 4, 2 Lima Romeo. Good morning, November 4, 2 Lima Romeo. November 4, 2 Lima Romeo, TA 42 on uh, Apron 4 with information kilo, pressing I-5 clearance to Stavanger. November Lima Romeo, clear to Stavanger, runway 2 to right, arrival 3 November, departure, squawk 0472. Clear to I-5 to Stavanger, T2 right, arrival uh, 3 November, departure, squawking 0472, November 4, 2 Lima Romeo. Lima Lima Romeo, clear is correct. T is at one five two eight one zero two one. Ah, so uh, yeah, it's just on the ground at Helsinki. Uh, we've just got our IFR clearance, uh, which is a uh, Advio uh, three November departure. Just getting up on the plates here, so expecting two two rides, which he said. Uh, so fairly simple. Um, Arnav Sid, uh, so on the 3 uh, November, which is on the bottom, climb on runway track to 2.5D uh, from Helsinki, and uh, right turn uh, 8284 uh, to the first waypoint, which is HK416, and then uh, after that to uh, Advio. So, uh, so the initial clearance altitude is 4,000 feet, so I can just pop that on the uh, outslope there. And uh, yeah, what he's done is he's. Uh, I mean, we could amend our block time for five minutes, but it's going to take us five minutes to sort of pop the flight plan and get everything ready anyway. So uh, I might as well just make use of that time and just request uh, start on schedule. So uh, our battery voltage is looking okay at the moment. So uh, what we can do is just turn the avionics master off. Yeah, so what we're doing, we've got four flights in uh, front of us here. So uh, we've got the route in there and uh, centre panel. One pending flight plan and uh, Departure, we're expecting Echo Fox Hotel Kilo, and uh, the destination is uh, Stavanger, Echo, uh, November, Zulu, Victor, and uh, all the waypoints. What I'll do is I'll check one route, but the first waypoint we want is uh, Avio for the uh, departure. So we can activate that and then just uh, tidy up a little bit. So runway 22 right for departure, except. And then we go on to procedure, select departure, it's a uh, Advio 3 November he cleared us for. So, uh, which is that one there, and uh, we just had a quick look at the plate anyway. But, uh, yeah, going out to HK1, uh, uh, correction 461, and then to uh, Advio, so we can load that into the box there. And uh, ground November 40, Lee Romeo, Chris Star. Still approved, uh, November Lee Romeo. Just post start check, so all lights are set. Peters, we'll just give a quick bong to make sure that's working. So, a couple of swings a little bit, and uh, there you go, stall heat fail, that's all good. Havionics master is on, fuel pumps remain off, flaps will keep up. But what we'll do is uh, we'll just put fully down and fully up just to check. Uh, full function, alternate air and gear both stow, parking brake just remains on, throttles at idle, cross feed, now just come on to test that. 
and trims and uh, follow through of what he's done. Orcs tanks are good. So flaps into landing setting. They look good. Coming back to approach and coming back to normal. Right, brilliant. So we're on uh, apron four at the moment, and it's uh, two two right for departure. So we've got a pretty long taxi, expecting um, Yankee all the way up to. Uh, uh, Yankee Delta, then Whiskey, uh, essentially holding it Whiskey Delta, Whiskey Hotel. We will need a run-up as well, but uh, we'll just uh, sort of see where that one comes. So uh, basically all my screens are set up. We've got the flight plan in. We all know what we're doing. So uh, yeah, well, I'll say let's, uh, let's request taxi. Let's try and get out of here. And uh, Helsinki Ground, November 42, Lima Romeo, request taxi. November Lima Romeo, taxi to Honor Punch, Lima. Uh, taxi order for Charlie Lima, about Romeo. Right, so to Charlie Lima, which is the uh, hold short for runway 33. And just get to half, you can see plugged in just in case he asks us to change. Right, so we're all looking good. Taxi night can go on. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go home. <laughs> Clear around, stop bars are out, clear on the right. Approaching runway 33. Three. Entered runway 33, three. 2499 meters remaining. Of uh, two two left. Yeah, so uh, yeah, today we're going all the way from uh, Helsinki, thousand miles back to uh, Wickham near London. Uh, so um, just decided to uh, just change it up a little bit. We're taking a fuel stop in uh, Stavanger because we can't make it on one tank. So uh, yeah, the first flight's going to be about four hours, uh, just over four hours, and uh, then take a fuel stop, thirty minutes on the ground, so it'll take a pee, and then uh, off to Stavanger after that. So, uh, yeah, the weather's a lot better than when it came out here. Uh, the temperature's improved quite a lot. There's a lot less cloud in the sky, and hopefully we should get some decent views on the way back, which I'm quite looking forward to. Nice, uh, so that's just going to be in the tower there. Uh, we can see the uh, Yankee um, holding point for uh, 2 2 left, which uh, we're clear to hold at at the moment. You can see the red stop bars on us as well as a bit, a bit of a confirmation. After that, I suspect he will uh, clear us from uh, Yankee Delta and to hold one of the whiskies. And we'll just need to uh, double check for him that we need a few minutes just to run up at the hold. November 42 Lima Rome, across runway 22 left, taxi to holding point, whiskey delta. Across uh, 22 left, taxi holding point, whiskey delta, and we'll need uh, about two minutes at the hold, November 42 Lima Rome. Yeah. Okay, so the stop bars are out, just having a quick look on the uh, on the final approach, all looks clear, and again, just on the other direction, still looks clear. So, crossing 2 2 left of Helsinki. Approaching runway 0 4 right, 2 2 left. Entered runway 0 4 right, 2 2 left. I wouldn't like to be doing these taxis in a uh, tail dragger, it'd be, uh, it'd be a pretty long one. So at the end of this taxiway, we'll take the left line, uh, left direction, and then uh, right again. So uh, you can sort of see where the uh, 
Red and yellow towers are on the left, and then uh, follow them around the corner to uh, Whiskey Delta. Right, Whiskey Delta on the right. Right, you can see the stop bars, so that's one we'll hold up. So just flicking the engine page on now. Gearbox is looking good, engine's almost ready. So uh, just was the right gearbox is coming in, I'm just going to increase power on that, just to wake him up a little bit. So uh, yep, yeah, view uh, 3 November departure, so we've got the next frequency plugged in 1985, and then uh, we contact radar passing 1500 feet, and then uh, just follow the RNAV. So what I can do is get the flight directors up on my screen, here, and uh, with flight level change, and uh, we'll do it at 100, uh, 100, to be fair, it's a pretty smooth day, so we can do it at 90 knots, and then we'll just put nav in there as well. So flight level change with 90, and uh, GPS with nav, and I'll select as well to uh, capture 4,000 feet. Yeah, so that's all looking pretty good, and uh, there's no major got use on this SID, so I'll just use the automatics to make the most of it. November, 40 Lima Romeo, ready for departure. November 42, Lima Romeo 22, zero degrees, nine and knots, runway 22 right, cliff take off. Cliff take off, runway 22 right, school, bye, November 42, Lima Romeo. Alright, so flight plan goes on that screen. Approaching runway 22 right. So that's entering 22 right, as four flights nicely told me. Entered runway 22 right, 3,109 meters remaining. It's nice after a runway this big. Makes a bit of a change. Alright, so I'll take it on the roll. So everything looks good inside, happy with the T's and P's. And full power coming in, fair bit of right boot. There you go. Alright, 100% achieved, 2300 of fuel flow looks good, airspeed alive. Acceleration all feels normal. Keeping it in balance. And uh, your damper comes on. And the autopilot's can come in. So AP, GPS, flight level change at 90 knots. So coming back on the engines, 91% on each. There you go, that looks normal. Landing light can come off. Fuel pumps can come off. Everything else is set. All right, coming up to 1,500 feet. So changing the frequencies over, contacting the radar. Contacting your radar, good morning. November 14, Lee Romeo, 1,600, climbing 4,000 on the uh, Admio 3, November. Hello, November 4 to Lima Romeo, ready contact, climb flight to Vela 180. Climb flight level 180, November 4 to Lima Romeo. Alright, all the way up to 180. Transition altitude 5,000 feet. So expecting right to turn with the SID to the next waypoint, Hotel Kilo 461. That's going to catch that inbound. Yeah, pretty, pretty stunning view of Helsinki behind us. That's nice. It is a lovely place. I do love Scandinavia. I do need to spend uh, spend more time here. And the best thing I love about today, compared to the trip over, is you just know where there's to worry about. So it just takes that additional pressure off. You don't need to worry about icing. You haven't got turbulence knocking you about. 
it's uh, it just takes it just makes life so much more easy. It makes the um, I mean I do enjoy a bit of weather. It does make a good challenge, um, but uh, it's nice when you get a day like this because you can chill out a little bit. We have got a bit of fog in Norway, but we're also hoping that's going to clear. Uh, we've got alternate plans if. Uh, if it does look like it's going to fog out too much, um, there's other airports near Oslo where we can uh, potentially look at going to en route. Uh, but uh, we've got a few hours for that to lift anyway, so uh, we're we'll just uh, taking a uh, sip from uh, when we get there. Uh, still looking good inside, we've got a decent rate of climb going at uh, 90 knots. And uh, approaching 4,500 feet, when we get to 5,000, we'll switch over to the flight levels. All we can do start to think about getting the oxygen ready. Put this bad boy back in my nose. <laughs> to be fair, I've had that many COVID tests recently that uh, I'm sort of uh, my nose is immune to it now. Climbing through transition altitude. Right, 5,000 feet there, PFD option, and then all we do is select standard bar row and it makes a jump there. And just confirming it with the alternate. So 5,000 feet, 5,000 feet, that will make sense. So approaching Hotel Kilo 461, and they're expecting the next uh, left turn out to uh, Hotel Kilo uh, 935 and straight out to uh, Advio. Uh, next Zealand, November, Fortnite Romeo. No, Zealand, so there you go. Uh, Which is all the way there, so direct, enter, enter, and a little bit of a left turn. And just follow that with a heading burger, expecting the aircraft to turn left. So, uh, Zealand is, uh, yeah, Sweden. Which I've only been to once before, but uh, being a typical pilot, I've only been to the airport, so uh, spent all of about uh, all of about an hour on the ground, I reckon. I think it would be a good beef burger there. There you go, we've got our weather covered up. Let's just zoom out a bit. Yes, as we expect, it's not much weather at all. Quick look at our destination. Yeah, so Stavanger, northerly winds 5 knots, 800 metres. Uh, Miss, vertical visibility 2, 991025, tempo 500 metres in fog. So, yeah, we're just going to have to uh, wait and hope that improves. The tower said that it improves from about uh, 7 Zulu, so uh, in an hour and a half. But uh, we'll just be keeping a good eye on that. But we've got plenty of time to source ourselves out for the best part of four hours. Trader, one minute, Phoenix, Romeo Lima, passing 2000 on the Valox Street, Quebec. Oh, it's so quiet. One minute, Phoenix, Romeo Lima, contact, climb flat, the valley, 280. Climb flat, the valley, 280. Chips get my nose again. Ugh, oh, did not miss that. Yeah, so to get the oxygen working, what we do is we plug it in. There's a little clip goes down here which uh, my tube goes into, and we've got the oxygen. So we just pull that on. Uh, just making sure there's no leaks around the tube. You have a quick look. We've got our oxygen gauge here, so we've got more than sufficient enough for the flight, especially with me on board and the oxy savers. And then what we do is we have a small ball here. So you can see that the ball is floating at the moment and you set it to your desired altitude. So I just want to drop the camera, I just squeeze it up to uh, just above 180. So uh, it's always nice to just uh, put a bit of oxygen there and play on the safe side. And then all we're doing now is just literally just pinching the cannulas and making sure they inflate and deflate. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, oxygen is flowing. Do 
we are going to pick up a little bit of bumps. I'm just going to put a slightly uh, higher uh, airspeed rate of climb on, just so, uh, technically speaking, the minimum speed for the autopilot on this is uh, 90, so it just gives that additional buffer. So nothing drops out on this. Right, uh, so you're giving it to clouds, so I'll turn it out. Come on. Test has just changed out on the command bar with 180, and uh, the aircraft there is slow to maintain. We're accelerating at the moment, and uh, when we get to uh, when we get to a task of about 160, so I'll think about bringing the throttles back to uh, about 60%, and uh, sort of see what that looks like. Then we'll just do some calculations to make sure that we're burning the uh, correct amount of fuel. We are made a gross error anyway. Yeah, so look, the task is looking about reasonable, so we're just going to bring the throttles back to 60%. Uh, so 60% on either side, just a bit of a gross error check, making sure that the RPMs are uh, more or less synced. Yeah, so TAS at 164 knots, uh, the aircraft's load level about 18,000 feet now, and uh, that's a little bit higher than planned actually, but we are nice and light, so it's saying the fuel of destination is uh, 30 gallons, so uh, we're going to get there with plenty, and uh, what I think about doing that, uh, I'm confident that the weather's going to improve, I can then sort of put us into a high speed cruise, and uh, and uh, we could probably expedite ourselves to Norway a little bit. So just a bit of a cruise yeah, gross. One, one. Just a bit of a cruise uh, gross yeah, over check. All we do is we're having a look at the screen and how much fuel we've got on board at the moment. So 71 gallons. So 71 and that's at times of 5.45. And we're expecting all destination all at uh, okay. 30 gallons. So what we can do is we can just do a gross error check every 30 minutes and uh, making sure that those figures are uh, tying in quite nice with each other. The weather looks pretty good, we've got satellite weather on and uh, we've got sort of no uh, no sort of uh, major build-ups, nothing major, uh, no sort of major concerns at all with that. So uh, yeah, I think uh, realistically for starters wise it's actually going to be a pretty easy cruise. So uh, yeah, time to sit back and relax. Uh, I was in the simulator the other day and the reason why I love the simulator is because they have amazing amounts of food there so we've got plenty of nibbles not going to have the drinks because uh, we're you know it's uh, we're quite a way out we're not expecting them until uh, UTC uh, 10 o'clock so uh, yeah four hours and uh, 15 minutes just under so uh, if we start drinking now it's uh, there's only one way it's going to come so uh, I might as well leave that to a bit of a later stage so uh, yeah just sort of see what uh, got this quite a nice uh, which is later with the altitude. Choco banana bar, so uh, I think I'll treat myself to one of them, enjoy a bit of breakfast because I haven't had that this morning, and uh, leave you guys to it, so just looking for a big picture. That's where we go, we've got a long way to go, and um, yeah, I'll probably uh, get in touch with you guys in Sweden, yeah, give you a bit of an update, hopefully this uh, cloud will clean up and uh, we'll be able to uh, have a look at uh, sort of a bit better scenery, so see you in a bit. Alright, so uh, you're joining me again in the uh, cruise, but just shy of the uh, Norwegian border. Uh, as you can see, sort of the red line, that's the, uh, the, sort of the FIR boundary. Still keeping a very close eye on the weather. The weather's not particularly uh, great, it's not picking up anywhere near what I hoped it uh, would. So, unfortunately, at the moment, uh, unless there's some sort of drastic improvement, I can say flying down the fuels, flying down the valleys, that's going to be a complete ride off. So, uh, going on to the satellite of weather now. Uh, it's picking up at a very, very slow rate. <coughs> so, we've got Stavanger here, 3104 knots, so not much wind. 
350 metres, so we've got an approach and that means we're not even allowed to make an approach there. Far vertical visibility 1. Temperature 9, 0.9, 1, 0, 2, 5, and becoming broken at 500. Well, the past few metas have always been becoming broken at 500 and it hasn't really had that change. So I have been monitoring sort of this uh, sort of the Western Norwegian airports fogging out over the past uh, over the uh, sort of the past few days, and they they always seem to recover much slower than what the tap actually says, and it always takes some time, and it's normally you know uh, it's, it's normally sort of a few hours later than what it is at the moment. So not looking particularly hopeful. So I think what my plan might actually be. And so there you go, we just so for uh, Tecva and now heading to uh, as uh, So my plan would be to go to Outflap still and uh, take a last weather call. And if the weather looks really bad, I want to pretty much write off all the... Uh, having a look at the plates now, uh, having a look at the map, should I say. I want to write off all these airports uh, so I can uh, November rock me all the way down to Stavanger and potentially look at... Uh, uh, Torp, I think it's pronounced. Uh, Torp, sorry, Torp. So I'm looking at Torp, and if we're in our lab, we're in a very good position to go straight to Torp anyway. So uh, we can just nip in there, go and get our fuel, but then uh, just sort of rejigger and flop down a little bit, and then uh, carry on home. So uh, yeah, it'd be a shame. I really want to flop down forward. It'd be amazing to do some VFR stuff, but uh, in fact, actually, you can start to see them coming off the nose, but I think it's just the airports which are just going to say no. Um, I don't want to waste the fuel, I don't want to put the risk there. And, if it's an approach ban anyway, the best we can actually do is just roll it over the top until uh, we get to sort of a bingo fuel, and then we're looking at going to our snow which would be top. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately that is what it is. But uh, anyway, it's uh, on the plus side. You know, we're just crossing into Norway now. It's absolutely stunning, as you can see. Uh, the aircraft's running absolutely beautifully. ATC are uh, giving us direct sort of times and nice little shortcuts. It's, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're in a good place. It's, uh, it's all right. So, uh, yeah, what I'll probably do is, uh, when we get close to the time lap, I'll turn everything on and then uh, I'll let you know what the decision's going to be. So, uh, see you around then. Oh, right, so uh, we are just up of Oslo. Uh, Oslo International Airport's just over to the right there. And uh, the city's just, uh, just on to our uh, actual left-hand side. Uh, basically, with the weather, uh, I don't want to... If we're going to go to Stavanger, I don't want to waste the... Uh, I don't want to be wasting fuel, you know, going around the fuel to them, potentially, you know, being completely out of options. So what I've asked for is to direct to uh, Roplin, which uh, we've got here on the screen. So uh, I'm just going to put it on to... Help them actually turn the camera on. So, uh, Roplo there, which is the start of the actual uh, one of the stars for uh, the standard ride between Stavanger. And uh, that then builds a little bit of fuel. So, uh, even if we went to Stavanger, did a missed approach, uh, we're actually going to be quite a good place because uh, we've got Stavanger there, just waypoint at the moment. And then we've got Torp as the, uh, as the destination. So, again, Stavanger going around, etc. After burning a bit of fuel on the go around, we're going to be about 20 gallons, which is actually quite a good place in this aeroplane because that gives you, you know, uh, that's even more speed back to 50% power, uh, or actually 60% power as altitude. Uh, that gives you two hours enjoyment, so one hour, you know, if you want to have a bit of a fudge back on final reserves, even though it's more than necessary, and uh, one hour to get places. So it would take us one hour to get to Torp, and then, uh, you know, we'd land comfortably with an hour's fuel, and Torp is. Uh, VMC, as you can see, so available three knots, cabin K with no sig, no sig, you know, not no significant change in two hours, so that's absolutely perfect. Let me look at our friend Stavanger, that screwed the whole day up for us. Um, yeah, so uh, the wind is picking up a little bit from the northwest, but uh, 600 metres in fog. Vertical uh, visibility in two, 10 9, so they're starting to become a split. So I am starting to believe at some point it will become broken at 500. So I think we should have a hopefully a fairly good chance of getting in. We've got one hour until we get there anyway. So uh, one hour for it to burn off. All we've got to do is just make sure it's not approaching and then we're in a good place. So uh, I'll turn the cameras on probably at the top of the descent and uh, which we need to delete off there. There you go. So. Uh, Turn the cameras off at the top of the step, and uh, yeah, we can uh, yeah sort of uh, do the arrival on the post together. So see you in a bit. This is Sola Information Romeo. Time zero eight five zero. Expect ILS Zulu one eight. Approach runway in use one eight. Four helicopters. Expect ILS 
Yankee, one, eight, approach, runway in use, two, niner, low visibility procedures in operation, do not cross illuminated stop bars, transition level, eight, zero, wind, three, four, zero, degrees, three, knots, variable, between two, eight, zero, and, zero, one, zero, degrees, visibility, niner, kilometers, R, V, R, one, thousand, two, hundred, meters, mist, clouds, scattered, one, hundred feet, overcast, three, hundred feet, temperature, one, zero, dew point, niner, Q, N, H, one, zero, two, five, Right, so that's the information for Romeo. So, uh, yeah, uh, Stavanger, visibility's improved a little bit. RBR 1200 pieces now. And, uh, yeah, cloud is, uh, yeah, scattered at one, and then the next is up at 300. So, it should hopefully be a decent chance of getting in. So, uh, we're just coming towards the top of descent now. Uh, you have a look on this uh, screen. I'll just pop the uh, GoPro on. We've got uh, one minute, 25 seconds until top of descent. So, I'll request that. And it'll be a continuous, continuous descent with the SID. All the way down to a cleared level, probably around 4,000 feet. And then uh, the RLS uh, Zulu 180 to uh, Stavanger. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, be interesting to see how this one goes. I hope it's, hope it's smooth. Um, this is nothing worse than doing a bit rough RLS. So it sounds like it's fog, low wind. It should be a bit of a smooth one. So, uh, Vertical track. just got to do our best. And I demand uh, 14 Libre Romeo across to seven. Right, 100 on the uh, out select, and uh, we now so we've got VPAF now, which is uh, right. That's VPAF captured, and uh, aircraft now starts to descend. And what we can do is we can just move out, just keep the throttles where they are, and just let the speed build up. So just amending the mean up profiles here because that was 100 feet too, uh, too low. So uh, there was constraints on 627 in between 80 and uh, 110, so we've gone for 100. Uh, and if you that's just joined. Lima, Romeo, runway change at uh, Sula. Clear direct to Texas. Okay, uh, runway change in Bergen, uh, confirm, we're clear direct to. You're clear direct to Texas. Tango, uniform, X ray, Alpha, Sierra. Clear direct to Texas. And uh, what runway is that? The number 40, Lima, Romeo. That's runway 36. Okay, copy. Speed, I'll just shut off the rate of descent. Right, let's go into flight plan. Cancel the arrival. And uh, Tuxas, so T U X A S, so let's say it's runway 36. Destination. So what we want to do procedure and uh, select approach, runway Alasulu, runway 36. Took out, there you go, instrument approach fix, so we'll get the plates out. Uh, show full screen before flight, uh, approach. Nice, oh, so we have a loft check this. So, uh, yeah, RLS Zulu runway 36. Uh, minimum is slightly higher, which uh, not particularly great, still some feet above airfield level. So it took us at 3,000 feet, and the minimum for this RLS is 220, so that's 229, so let's call it 230. Uh, Fix change for the RLS, it's got your 11135, 11135, so load, and uh, flight took us to load. Okay. And what we could probably have actually done is activate approach, and flight plan took us we have. Well, wow, stunning. That's gorgeous. So, if we could go VNAP direct, uh, maybe just click 
enough. Up, uh, show us on the charts. Yeah, so uh, just a quick rebriefing. Uh, the RLS uh, Zulu runway 36, uh, 1135, which we got in uh, both 1 and 2. And uh, final approach course is 359, we'll check. Uh, Glasgow check ice is uh, 1.9, 630 on the altitude. And airport elevation, ramp, runway elevation as well is 29 feet. So the Mr. Post climb straight ahead 3,000 feet, expect vectoring or uh, we've lost comps. Uh, well, if we've got lost comps, I think effectively we are going to go to. Um, I keep on forgetting the name of the place. Torpail? No, oh, Torp, that was it. So we will go straight to Torp and uh, deal with the problem in the end. Yeah, because it is BMC, it would be a lot easier to land <laughs> with a situation there at last, uh, rather than uh, Stavanger. So uh, looking at the paper, we're going to success 3,000 feet, so we need to be a puddock at uh, 2,700, and uh, then we'll continue the uh, continue down to the final pitch fix of uh, Guernsey, uh, which is uh, at five miles, then uh, all the way down to the uh, all the way down to the uh, minimum sense. Uh, sorry, Press decision. Rescue to proceed in uh, Altitude. 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 Yeah, let's see how it goes. No real changes, just having a quick look at the look at the fuel. So it's gone into its middle sector, so we're not entirely sure. I did check when it was above 17 that uh, it was accurate, so 34 gallons probably uh, does seem quite reasonable at the moment, and the fuel level destination hasn't changed either. Get one of those stop aircraft, that'd be uh. Hello, Melanie Romeo, descent 5,000 feet on QNH 1025. 5,000 feet on QNH 1025, and uh, 4 speed Romeo. And about 5,000 we go. Right, 10,000 feet, oxygen goes off. Get a hiss as that comes out. Right, uh, next one, so we're on uh, approach your own, 194. Uh, let's just have to take a stab in the dark, tower 118. Uh, 35 for the next one. Down to 5,000 feet, 1025. Everything else looks set. DME's coming in from the RLS, but we've still got a possible idea on the uh, actual RLS itself, yeah. Actually, you can start to see just over to the right. So, uh, Stavango is basically, uh, I'm going to take a guess, it's uh, just have a quick look at the zoom out. So. Yeah, so Stavango is where my cursor is now, so uh, sort of right in the nose, and it is breaking up significantly there. In fact, you can see it's sort of the northern coastline. Remember, for two, Lima Romeo, would you speed by 10 knots for sequencing? Okay, would you speed by 10 knots for Slim Romeo? It's like the first time anyone's ever told me in an A42 to slow down. Normally going to these big airports, should have been holding all the jets up. So just doing some initials, so no lights need to go on at the moment. Fuel pumps one, fuel pumps two go on. Uh, flaps are up. 
Old centers, uh, for IMC, technically speaking, we're going to need that open, so I just remember to close it on the runway. Mostly uh, gear is up, hand parking brake is off with pressure in the pedals, heat is all off, cross feeds are closed, trims all set, not transferring fuel. I'll do the gear in the uh, approach lap at four, and then uh, I'll do the landing oh, lap. I did a landing lap at, uh, uh, at the decision altitude. Target speed, we'll do a uh, we'll do 100 uh, North Stanley RS. Lambda 4 Julian, Romeo Dyson, uh, 3000 feet, clear the INS, Zulu 360. 3000 feet, clear the INS, Zulu 360, Lambda 4 Julian, Romeo. Right, so 3000 feet to uh, 26 and then 2700 at uh, Piddock, she has cleared us for the approach. Start, we're going to speed back ever so slightly, give yourself a bit of time. 4 miles, 600 feet per minute. So. Lima, Lima, Romeo, no further speed, no fiction. Okay, no further speed, remember, Lima, Romeo. Alright, uh, AP's out. And sending to. Uh, to Fight Max is out, sending to 2700. Here. I guess I'll just mute it out for the time being. Okay, so approaching 2700, missed approach house to 3000. Low glass expected to come in very shortly. Selecting 3000, 2700, levelling off there and get a speed trickle back. There you go, sounds coming in. Expecting all this immediate sense as well. Just a bit of mass to your change, trimming forward. So it's more probably these approaches. And I'll bring speed back to 110. Right, all looking good so far, 4.8 miles. 1600 feet. Pushing four miles, that's approach flight coming in. Big altitude change there, to so make sure we don't balloon too much. Looking for a speed about 100 knots now. Keeping a rate of descent going. Looking good. Right, landing lights on, gears down with three, play track we have in a good place. We'll get rid of the yaw damper at uh, decision altitude. Alright, all looking 
good so far, the localizer on the glide. On the localizer on the glide, there's probably 500 feet to go there. So it's making very, very small corrections. There you go, start a good vision with the runway, and that was 200 feet above minimum, so about 400 feet. There you go, so that's a nice little RLS into uh, Stavanger. Uh, where are we going to vacate? So I probably think. Not entirely sure actually, so uh, what I'll do, put the approach map on now. And obviously there's no major obstructions in front, so I'll probably go more for the numbers now, see if we can vacate at the, uh, the first left. So targeting 90 knots now, everything looks good. Yeah, it went long when I said the weather is improving. Considering the past few, uh, the past few actuals have been sort of, you know, vertical visibility and when they're reading vertical visibility, that's when, uh, <laughs> you know, you're in for a bit of a rough day. Right, your damp is out. Minimums. All finals complete. Holding 85 there. Chopping the power. Again, wide runway, it's not flowing too early. Bit of a float, raising the nose up just a little bit. And eventually, hopefully, should find the ground. Got some pretty neat lights here. Light the lights off, tax lights on. Fuel pumps come off, flaps come up, and I'll turn air now closes. And let's see where we're going to. Uh... Number 4 to Lima, request taxi to parking. Number 4 to Lima, Romeo, uh, continue on runway 36 and taxi left on Alpha 1. 236 left on Alpha 1, level 1, November 4 to Lima, Romeo. <laughs> First time in Norway for me. Quite nice. <laughs> yeah, so uh, all we've got to do is a quick turnaround. So go and get a suck of gas, go and take a pee, uh, stretch my legs for just five minutes, and then uh, and then back in the plane, and then we're back to London. So about another three hour flight. Uh, I found a bit lower, 120 on this one. And I think what I might do is again drop out of the airways and. Um, I might go because we're flying over all the old oil and gas fields that I used to work at, so I uh, might go and have a quick look at them. That's a bit of a nostalgia. So here's me looking for the chart, it's a big flash of rising. Standish 2 contact tower, 